Hi everyone, welcome to the webinar on container native and cloud-based inter enterprise integration with WSO2 Integration Studio. This is the second webinar in the WSO2 Integration Studio webinar series. I am Dinuksha, a software engineer at WSO2 working in the enterprise integrator team. We also have Delisha here with us who is also a software engineer working on the enterprise integrator. In today's webinar, we will be talking about two key deployment options introduced, in, introduced to the new integration studio. In today's agenda, we will be talking about what Docker is and uh, what approaches there are uh, for container native programs in uh, integration. And we will also have a demonstration on Docker deployment. Um, after that, we will have an inter introduction to WSO2 Integration Cloud. We will also have another demonstration on how you can deploy an application from Integration Studio to WSO2 Integration Cloud. Now I will hand it over to Dilisha to proceed. Yeah, uh, so thank you, Dinuksha, and uh, hello, everyone. Um, as Dinuksha mentioned, uh, the first part of this webinar is about the Docker deployment capabilities of the WSO2 Integration Studio. So um, first of all, let us quickly see what Docker is and uh, uh, why it is so important in the integration space. Uh, so uh, by definition, uh, Docker is a tool designed to make it easier to create, uh, deploy, and run applications by using containers. Right? So what is a container? Uh, a Docker container is a standardized unit which can be created on, on the fly uh, to deploy a particular application or uh, uh, an environment. So uh, it could be an uh, Ubuntu container, uh, a CentOS container. Uh, so this container uh, is like uh, to fulfill the requirement uh, from an operating system point of view. Uh, so also it could be an application oriented container uh, like the, the Tomcat Ubuntu container. Uh, so uh, we are not planning to explain the Docker ecosystem in depth, so uh, let us move to the next step. So uh, <clears throat> what does container native really mean? Uh, so container native software means uh, software that does not just happen to work in, uh, on or around containers, but uh, rather is purposefully designed for containers. Uh, so when it comes to microservices, it is far more effective to, uh, effective to use container-based deployment pattern um, rather than going for like uh, virtual machines. Uh, the main reasons for this are uh, mostly uh, the, uh, the flexibility and uh, the low cost uh, that containers provide uh, when compared to uh, virtual machines. Uh, also, uh, when it comes to uh, scalability and maintainability, Containers have many advantages, uh, which uh, virtual machines do not have. So uh, we are not going to talk about the container-based architecture in depth in this webinar. So let's just talk about uh, what it has to do with integration. Uh, so uh, uh, containers are um, ideal for deploying microservices based applications in the cloud. Um, they provide uh, great flexibility uh, by hiding the physical infrastructure and uh, operating system requirements uh, from uh, the application. So, um, and uh, you know, uh, this makes uh, them ideal for running workloads uh, on premise and also in uh, public clouds. So, uh, uh, the WSO2 micro integrator is uh, specifically designed to adhere to this container native microservices architecture. Uh, the WSO2 micro integrator is a super lightweight. Uh, a faster version of the WSO2 Enterprise Integrator, which is uh, the mother product of it. So uh, this allows users uh, to take integration to a whole new level by uh, decentralizing the control across micro-integrator containers. Uh, so how does this uh, decentralizing of integration can be advantageous to a business? So uh, just uh, think of a traditional integration platform. Uh, it has a central governing system and uh, the decisions and uh, configurations should go through the central governing body all the time. Right? So this will cost both time and money and uh, also it will be uh, less flexible as well. Right? 
So uh, just uh, think about a decentralized integration solution. So a decentralized integration solution is faster and more effective when compared to traditional systems and um, also they are extremely flexible and scalable uh, due to its uh, uh, modularized architecture. Uh, so let's move on to the next section of this webinar. Uh, so we are going to demonstrate the Docker image generation capabilities of the WSO2 integration studio. Uh, so uh, before doing that, so first of all, uh, let us quickly design a simple but uh, a frequently used integration scenario using the integration studio. Uh, so we can deploy it and uh, test it uh, by uh, deploying it as a Docker image. So uh, the scenario is like this. Uh, we have REST web service, and uh, we are going to use the, the enterprise integrator uh, or the micro integrator uh, as a proxy to access that particular endpoint. Okay. So we hope that uh, you are clear with the, the scenario. It, it is a very simple one. So uh, let us start implementing this scenario. Okay. So. Uh, I'm going to open uh, the WSO2 integration studio. So, uh, so let me create a new workspace here. Uh, and uh, say launch. Okay, so uh, the integration studio is uh, starting up and uh, we are on uh, the getting started page of the integration studio. So uh, let us create uh, a new project. Uh, let us name it so REST proxy project and I'm gonna say finish. And you can see uh, the project is created. So uh, the first thing we have to do is uh, we have to actually uh, uh, represent the, the actual uh, REST endpoint uh, inside this. So what we should do is uh, we are going to create a new end endpoint uh, to represent the actual endpoint. So the endpoint name uh, we can use, uh, let's say, uh, users. HTTP endpoint and uh, the address we have to uh, give the actual address here. So this is the the actual web service. Uh, which we are going to use. So uh, I'm going to say finish. And you can see the endpoint uh, is created here. So I'm going to save. And uh, the next thing we have to do is we have to create uh, a REST API to uh, proxy uh, the endpoint which we created. So I'm going to create a new REST API here. So I'm going to name it as a, let's say, a user info REST API. And I'm going to give the context as a, uh, we can say, user info. So this uh, particular web service is returning us some user information. So the context, yes. And I'm going to say finish. And uh, you can see the API is created now. So the in this API, I'm going to change this URL, URL style to URL mapping. And I'm going to map this URL to uh, users. So let's say save. And uh, okay, the first thing we are going to do is uh, let's just log the message, the, the log the original request which is coming to this proxy. So I'm going to put a log mediator here. And uh, let's say uh, log the request as the description. 
And uh, the next thing that we have to do is we have to call uh, our actual endpoint, right? So I'm going to use a call mediator. And uh, inside the call mediator, I'm going to uh, put my uh, predefined endpoint or uh, the actual endpoint, right? And ultimately, uh, we have to uh, send the response back to the user. So I'm going to put a respond mediator at the very end of this integration uh, flow. So yes, so, uh, we will say uh, respond to user. Okay, so this is uh, this is a very simple scenario and this is uh, the configuration we are going to use. So let us quickly, before doing anything, let us quickly uh, test this scenario. So uh, I'm gonna uh, click on this project and I'm going to run this. So uh, then I'm going to select uh, the artifacts which I need to run. And I'm going to say finish. So now you can see uh, the micro integrator is starting up in the background. So you can actually uh, run uh, your project uh, applications uh, in build now with the with this new distribution of tooling uh, of the, the integration studio. So you can see here the service started up. So I'm going to uh, go to my terminal and let's invoke this, uh, that service using a curl command, a simple curl command. And uh, yes, you can see the response. Uh, you can see uh, there are some user details. So it is working. Okay. Uh, let me switch back to my to the integration studio and let us stop, stop the server. Uh, and uh, next thing we are going to do is now we are going to uh, generate a docker image using uh, the wso 2 integration studio so first of all let me go to the terminal and uh, show you that uh, what are the docker images i am having so i don't have any images at the moment in my local repository so i'm going to go to integration studio and i'm going to right click on my project and i'm going to say generate docker image so this is the Docker image generation wizard. So you can see uh, the name of the application here and uh, the application version here. So uh, then we have to give uh, the name of the Docker image here. So let's say rest proxy uh, Docker image. It's a simple name. Now also I'm going to give the tag, let's say uh, 1.0.0. Then uh, the export destination. So uh, this Docker image generation wizard will. Uh, uh, so I'm going to give uh, my desktop as uh, the destination and I'm going to say next and I'm going to say finish. So you can see in the background, uh, the image is getting generated. So uh, uh, what happens is here is uh, we are actually bundling uh, a, a micro integrator runtime uh, after deploying all this, uh, all these artifacts which we selected into that micro integrator runtime and we are bundling it as a docker image so uh, this docker image generation wizard will push it to your local registry automatically local docker registry automatically and it will also create a tarball which you can uh, distribute and uh, whenever uh, distribute and deploy in any uh, um, docker registry you want so uh, you can see so yes you so we got a notification saying the docker image generation image successfully generated and you can see uh, the image id here so uh, let me go to the terminal and let us check if uh, the image is successfully deployed yes so you can see uh, i have this stress proxy docker image here so let us run this and see so i'm going to say docker run and uh, yeah, when running, uh, you can see we have to uh, bind these two ports with your local, with your machine's ports because uh, we are using the micro integrator inside the Docker image. So uh, the micro integrator needs to use these two ports. So I'm gonna bind, I, uh, I, I did bind it and uh, I'm gonna say, uh, yes, so my image. So I'm gonna, click uh, press enter and okay. So the uh, image is getting deployed now. So let us check uh, if the 
maintain is up. Okay, so you can see uh, the this proxy Docker image is uh, uh, the, the container is uh, running now. Uh, it, it is up for eight seconds. So uh, let us just invoke the same curl command and see whether the service is working. Yes, so you can see it is working. So let me quickly uh, stop all the Docker containers I have uh, in my server. And uh, meanwhile, uh, just uh, let me show you uh, the tarball which is generated by the Docker image generation wizard. So this tarball, you can use it to uh, deploy, uh, deploy it uh, as a Docker image as well. So uh, let us do that also. So you can see on my desktop, I have this uh, tarball. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, Docker load and uh, I'm going to give this uh, tarball here. And I'm going to press enter. Uh, yes, now you can see the image is loaded. You can see the uh, image ID. So I'm going to tag it now, tag my image. Uh, let us say uh, rest proxy image, uh, say Docker image 2. And uh, the version or the tag 1.0.0. Okay, so I'm going to tag it. And you can see uh, in my images list, you can see the newly de uh, deployed uh, Docker image. So I'm going to run it quickly. Uh, in the same way we did. And you can see now. Uh, we have this image, this container running here. So it is up for four seconds. So uh, let us invoke uh, that service, the same service again, and check if this is working. Uh, still, uh, the content is not up. Let's just keep trying. Yes, so we got the response. So this is the, so, uh, so it is working. So those are the this those are the features of this uh, the the newly packed uh, Docker image generation feature of uh, uh, the newly uh, released WSO2 Integration Studio. So uh, next, I think we can uh, move on to the next segment of this uh, demonstration. So Dinuksha will talk about uh, the cloud deployment capabilities of the WSO2 Integration Studio. Dinuksha, over to you. Thanks, Dinuksha. Um, so. Next, we will look at how we can deploy our application in the cloud within a few minutes uh, from the Integration Studio itself. But before we start, let me introduce what WSO2 Integration Cloud is. WSO2 Integration Cloud is a platform which allows you to host your cloud-to-cloud, cloud-to-on-premise integrations and API backends on a scalable cloud platform. It also includes the WSO2 Enterprise Integrator Profile capabilities for hosting your integrations and MSF4J, Ballerina, or any other custom runtime for hosting the API backends. Let me mention a couple of uh, prominent features of the Integration Cloud. Integration Cloud allows you to deploy, um, allows you to deploy uh, deploy and run any type of application or service that you have developed in your uh, local environment. Um, you can also select a pre-set up runtime for your application or for your service. Additionally, you can also connect with external cloud services such as um, Twitter, Gmail, Salesforce using WSO2 connectors or integrate heterogeneous protocols, services, legacy systems and cloud systems, etc. Um, it also has the ability to connect with mobile applications, social media, and various other data repositories. You can easily connect with on-premises, on-premise systems, databases using a VPN between your data center and the integration cloud. Furthermore, you can expose your integrations as APIs instantly by connecting to the WSO2 API cloud. So um, 
Now let us see how you would typically deploy a composite application to the integration cloud. So first, um, this is now when you visit the integration cloud website, this is the landing page. So if you require to register, you can sign up here. Um, so you can find the pricing details over here. But if you want to try this, uh, try our demonstration out, you can just try, sign up for a free account, which is which is there for 14 days, and you don't have to you don't have to give a credit card for that. So you you can sign up for free over here. And uh, so once you sign up, this will be your landing page. So you can see we don't have any applications here. So let's quickly create an application. So when you get go to uh, create application wizard, you can see all the run times that's available, all the other services that the integration cloud platform provides. So since we are going to deploy a car application, we will select WSO2 ESP composite application. And then we will be deploying it from the local file system. So you can give a application name. We will say rest application. And then you can provide the version and we will upload uh, the we will upload the car file uh, from here. Uh, so we will uh, use the same application that we just uh, deployed to Docker. You can right click on it and say export composite application project. And I will select, I have already selected the desktop. So you can say finish. And now it will be exported to your desktop. Um, you can select the car file from here, open, and then say create. So now the application will get created. It will take some time. So you can see if you are having, if you are testing some configuration using the integration studio, coming back and forth to integration cloud could be very troublesome. So our uh, uh, the whole purpose of the integration cloud deployment feature is so that you can deploy your solution to integration cloud from the integration studio itself. So let us see how we can do that. So you can see the application was deployed to the cloud successfully. So uh, right now we'll see how we can uh, deploy from the um, Okay, so uh, this is your landing page of the integration cloud. Um, so, okay, so we will go to integration uh, studio and then select the application. And then right click and select deploy to integration cloud. So it will give you a wizard and here you have to enter your credentials for the WSO2 integration cloud. So if you don't have an account, you cannot you can sign up using the link on the bottom. So for this, you would first need the organization key. You can find the organization key from the cloud itself. In when you click on organization, you can see the organization key right here. So you can copy that and take. And then next we will input our email and password that we use to register to the cloud. Let me click on login. So here you have to select which artifacts you're gonna include in the car. So we need both the API and the endpoint we just created. So we will say next. So here you can specify a name, a version, and if you require a description, you can enter that as well. And then you can see there are different enterprise integrator runtimes available. So we will select the 6.4 version, and then if you want an icon, you can put that. So we will add a tag for the version, saying version 1.0. And then we will click on finish. So you can see the notification saying it will uh, 
be deployed and you will be notified once it's ready so as you can uh, so until the app is deployed let me briefly walk you through the deployment process when you create an app integration cloud creates a docker image for the application that you just uploaded then the docker image will be deployed in a kubernetes cluster as an isolated container so you can see why this process would require some time So we will be notified once it's ready and the endpoints have been uh, deployed successfully. It takes some time. So here you can see the endpoints uh, that are that we can use to access the API we just created. So again, if you go to the cloud, we can see the application that we have just created. Here we have the application. So we, if we go inside that, we can see that uh, the endpoints are available. So we can use one of these endpoints to test whether the application we just deployed is working fine. So you can just copy that URL. and then make the same curl request that we made previously. So you can see that it works the same way. Um, so this is how you would uh, deploy an application to the integration cloud from the integration studio and uh, studio integration studio itself. So you can see how easy that is. Um, next, we will look at, say you want, you have a new newer version of a previous application that you have deployed. So you can do the same thing. You can upload or, or rather deploy a new version of the same application from the integration studio and studio itself. So we will look at how we can do that. So again, when you go to Integration Studio, you click on the composite application and then write, select Deploy to Integration Cloud. Now again, you will have to select the artifacts that you require to be in the car. And then from the top menu, you will select Create New Version. Here you have to specify which application you're deploying the new version to, and then you can specify what the uh, new version is and then we, you can again add tags so we will add version 2.0 and then click on finish so again when you even when you create a new version what it would do is it would deploy this application on an isolated container and deploy it to the same kubernetes cluster so it will be uh, actually a separate isolated application. So this process will take some time as well, like previously. And then once it's deployed, you can see the endpoints again. So you can use the same endpoints to, uh, to check whether your application is working fine. So in the UI dashboard, you can see the new version has been deployed. So that concludes our uh, section on uh, cloud deployment. So in conclusion, we believe that these deployment features have played a major role in achieving our objective of improving developer experience with the integration studio. Um, so you can subscribe to our webinar series by using uh, the link in the presentation. Um, next webinar in this series will be on debugging integration flows. So uh, if you all have any questions, you can direct them to us.
Okay, so uh, we have a, a question. So uh, the question is, uh, does uh, the integration studio support Kubernetes artifacts uh, generation? Uh, so uh, at the moment, uh, we do not support Kubernetes artifact generation uh, like out of the box, but uh, uh, we are definitely planning to provide this feature in our future releases. So we are uh, working on that. So uh, it will be definitely there in our future releases. Yes. Uh, so uh, we have another question. Um, the question is, uh, how do we manually deploy the artifacts as Docker images? Um, so uh, uh, what, what you can do is, uh, so we have a Docker image for the uh, WSO2 micro integrator uh, available. Uh, it, it, it is available on the Docker hub. So uh, what you can do is uh, you can simply use it as uh, the base image and uh, create a Docker image, uh, you know, bundling all the artifacts. So you can, uh, that's the way you can manually do it. So I hope uh, that answers your question. So, uh, yeah, we have another question. Uh, so is there any support for uh, CI CD integration scenarios? Uh, so uh, as you saw that uh, we already have this uh, Docker deployment capabilities. So um, what we can do is, uh, and also uh, we are working on uh, the feature where, where you could actually uh, uh, build the, the Docker image uh, using uh, uh, a, a, a framework like Maven. So you can actually automate uh, this uh, Docker image generation feature and use it in your CI CD uh, flows. So we have that, uh, so we are working on that uh, uh, feature and uh, it will uh, be in our next release. So, um, yeah. I think, uh, okay, uh, okay, so we have another question. Uh, uh, is uh, the WSO2 enterprise uh, okay? Is the WSO2 enterprise integrator container friendly? So uh, we have a container. We have actually a container friendly version of the WSO2 enterprise integrator, and we call it uh, the the WSO2 micro integrator. So as you uh, saw uh, throughout this demonstration, we were using that. Uh, so uh, it is actually. Uh, uh, the the W sort of micro integrator it is a it is a lightweight and a faster version of the uh, enterprise integrator, uh, which is uh, the mother product, and it directly supports the the container based microservices architecture. So you can uh, use it uh, in that way. So it is definitely container friendly. Um, so we have another question on cloud deployment. Uh, it asks, uh, what is the benefit of cloud integration deployment? Can we deploy on any other public cloud as well? So uh, on benefits of cloud integration, I think the uh, major benefit is that uh, WSO2 integration cloud supports multiple runtimes, even um, even multiple databases, and uh, it also supports Ballerina. So um, and also uh, on uh, other cloud uh, on other cloud uh, platforms i think it's a very broad question however the integration studio has a capability to deploy applications to a remote server and so and also this remote server can reside on any cloud platform so yeah so uh yes I guess uh, that is it, and uh, yes. So I think uh, we can wrap up this webinar. And uh, also, if you have uh, further questions, uh, please just uh, 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 send them to us. So we will answer them uh, through emails. So we will definitely answer them through emails. And uh, yes, so uh, I think uh, 
yeah good to wrap up so yeah thank you very much for listening and uh, also subscribe to our web uh, webinar series uh, through this link so uh, thank you very much and have a very good day